Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Today this is going to be my score predictions for match day 6 of the championship. I cannot believe we're in match day 6 already. It feels like last week since we were getting the championship season up and running. If you haven't seen the series before, I'll quickly explain how it works. It's pretty self-explanatory. I go through 12 championship fixtures and because this is the fixture marathon, I go through 3 other fixtures outside the championship that I'll be keeping my eye on as well. I always ask people who watch this to leave their predictions in the comments down below and if you get any right, I'll shout your channel out in the next What We Learn video when I review what went on in the weekend. Also if you like this series, please make sure to give the video a like, share and a subscribe, all of that will be tremendously appreciated. So without any further ado, let's go through the exciting mouth wolf twin fixtures we have for match day 6. So for the first fixture, it is Cardiff versus Fulham. And Game I'm really intrigued about because both of these teams were relegated from the Premier League last season. Cardiff have had a pretty slow start. I wouldn't say they've looked completely bad. They've just lacked a vocal point up front and are really struggling to score goals at the moment. With Fulham, they're almost direct contrast. They are having no problem scoring goals, but at the back, they're a little bit leaky. I'll be very interested if Neil Warnock is going to tweak anything. Cardiff's season is clearly not working at the moment. They had a 0-0 draw against Blackburn. Defensively, they didn't look all that bad if you compared it to their other way performance against Reading. That was a complete horror show, but it was dramatically improved against Blackburn. But in the end, they really struggled to score any goals. With Fulham, they had a 2-1 away loss to Nottingham Forest, which was a game that didn't really go along their way. But defensively, they were tremendously exposed. And what my advice would be that they are just way too high up the pitch and Scott Parker will need to tell his players for that. Last of Steven Sessignon, who's had a couple of good games, has made a few mistakes as well. But I think with him being such a young defender, he'll only use this as valuable match experience and he'll learn from it. Fulham were also knocked out of the EFL Cup by Southampton. A performance that didn't really convince me. I don't think that Fulham really wanted to take this competition all that seriously at all. Southampton, by none, had a lot more energy than Fulham, who did try to play out from the back, but they were completely pounced upon and in were intercepted way too easily, which is how ultimately Fulham lost in the end. As a prediction, I mean, Fulham have a very good record against Cardiff. Cardiff managed to beat Fulham 4-2 last year in the Premier League and that was their first Premier League win. I don't think they'll beat Fulham this time though. I think Fulham will win by two goals to one and get an away victory. I think the game will go similarly to Huddersfield Town. Cardiff will have a bit of a ball and have a few chances but Fulham will have most of it and then eventually after a stubborn defence they'll break through and score a couple. So I'm going to say a 2-1 away victory to Fulham. So the next game is Bristol City versus Middlesbrough. This is going to be a half 12 kickoff on the Saturday. And I'm intrigued of the outcome of this game. Bristol City have gone on a three match winning streak. Very typical of Lee Johnson to have a great and very long streak of games. It's essential that Bristol City keep the streak as long as possible because with Lee Johnson, as well as he could go on a winning streak, he could also go on a losing streak. And you'd rather you wouldn't get the losing streak just before the international break. Alan Branhill as captain is really having a tremendous effect to Bristol City. They've won three games in a row since their brilliant 2-0 victory over Queen's Park Rangers. They've not been slowing down ever since and I think they'll use that confidence against Middlesbrough. With Middlesbrough, I still have a feeling they need a little bit of time to get themselves going. There's been times where Jonathan Woodgate has implemented his style to good use, but I think the players are still trying to get used to it. They're still giving the ball away very cheaply. Their passing is not up to notch with his style and defensively they look a lot more weaker, but it's obviously because they're trying to move away from the Tony Pulis era. Bristol City do have a couple of players injured, more importantly Jade Silva and Adam Nagy. I think both of them injured will be a real shame for Bristol City. However, despite that, I think with the quality they are going forward, Benicophobia has looked red hot form with Bristol City. I think he'll get a 2-1 home victory for Bristol City and I think they'll go on a four match winning streak before the international break. So I'll say 2-1 Bristol City. So the next game is Wigan versus Barnsley. I am very intrigued about the outcome in this game. Whoever gets the worst result out of this fixture will be in the relegation zone in the first international break. And that mentally can really destroy a team. Wigan have lost four games and Barnsley have also lost four games as well. With Wigan, their problem has been 
not being very, very strong in terms of attack. With Barnsley, they kind of shoot themselves in, the, in their own foot. With Wigan, I'm still waiting for the likes of Jamal Lowe can step up to the championship. He's looked someone that can have potential, but he's not quite got a composure to bag in a goal yet. With Barnsley, I'm still a little bit uncertain if all their signings have clicked yet. I mean, they spent a lot of players in this window. The fact that I'm really devoid, if they are devoid of any championship quality, I'm a little bit worried that if they don't click in time, then Barnsley could be in for a really tough season. I am really struggling to predict this game. This game is so unpredictable. It could be 4-1 Wigan or it could be 4-1 Barnsley. It is really that unpredictable. Last time they played each other, Wigan won by three goals to two and I think it will be a real high scoring game actually. I think Wigan will win by three goals to one. I think Wigan will go on a tremendous start, I think, because Wigan at times don't look all that bad. If things can go right for them and they can capitalize and score on their set pieces, then Wigan could be completely unstoppable. And with Barnsley away from home, I'm really not that convinced of them as of yet. So I'm gonna say 3-1 home victory to Wigan. So now we have West Brom versus Blackburn Rovers teams that have both received a draw last weekend. Blackburn managed to lose in the Carabao Cup against Sheffield United. It was a game in pretty much in two halves. Sheffield United ultimately dominated for the first half. The second half, Blackburn eventually grew into it, but ultimately they just did not have enough time to find a winner and it resulted in Tony Mowbray getting sent off in pretty controversial fashion. And I heard that Chris Wilder tried to defend Mowbray, but in the end, he got sent off to the stands. With West Brom, they've not really put so much of a foot wrong at the moment. Defensively, they look a lot more solid than last year. My biggest concern is gonna be their attacking out there. And I don't think Kenneth Zahor is gonna be a striker that's gonna give West Brom 20 goals, unlike the likes of Dwight Gale and Jay Rodriguez got for them last year. They could be held with the likes of Diangana, who could pop forward and can score a couple of goals. The likes of Jake and Livermore looked really good lately for West Brom as well. And Sam Johnston, once again, proving to be one of the better keepers in the championship. And I was surprised I didn't actually include him in the substitutes in my championship team for month in August. With Blackburn, they had a tricky start, but then they had a two-match winning streak and that was ended by a nil-nil draw against Cardiff. I think West Brom will be a tough, tougher test and I think West Brom will win by one goal to nil. I don't see many goals in this game and I think West Brom will eventually, maybe in the second half, get a 1-0 home victory and this could be resulting from Blackburn going down to 10 men because over the years we've seen quite a few red cards in this fixture so I'm going to say a 1-0 home victory to West Brom. So now we have Sheffield Wednesday versus Queen's Park Rangers. Two teams are in very similar positions in terms of the league table. Sheffield Wednesday at home looked pretty good lately. Queen's Park Rangers though playing under a new philosophy under Mark Warburton is going in very, very good fashion. Eberich Iese is being a star man at the moment for Queen's Park Rangers. Jordan Hugo has really stepped up to score three goals already. With Sheffield Wednesday, they do have attacking players for the likes of D Stephen Fletcher. He's looked real, really banging in form and has really well deputising over Forestieri, who's still on his ban. I don't see a lot separating these two sides, so I am predicting a 1-1 draw. I think both teams will cancel each other's out because both, I think, have quality in the midfield and have a lot of firepower in attack. And I think both keepers have been really impressive so far. So I think this will be a 1-1 draw. So the next game is Reading versus Charlton. And this is a very, very interesting encounter indeed. Reading have proved to be in pretty good form at the moment, with the likes of George Puskas and Ovi Ajaria finding their feet now in this club. I think Reading are going in the right direction. With Charlton, they're still undefeated, reaching double figures in points already. They clearly know what they're doing and know how to set up against most teams of the championship. The last encounter against this us was a 4-3 away victory to Reading and it was a highly, highly entertaining game. And I hope we see the same here. However, I don't see it. I think with Charlton, I think they're going to sit really, really defensively, much to Reading's disappointment because Reading don't normally like to hold the ball as much. Jose Gomez is trying to add a different philosophy where Reading have more of the ball. But with Charlton, I think they're going to allow Reading to do that. They'll be very, very deep defensively. The likes of Tom Lockyer will have to be very alert on this game. They do have dangerous players for the likes of Conor Gallagher and Lyle Taylor. 
if they're not careful, they could really cause Reading's defence with a lot of problems. Jonathan Lecco can also ping a real good pass as well. With Reading though, I just don't see anything stopping them as, at this moment. And I think Charlton's resilience actually will pay off. I think Charlton just seem to find a way not to lose at the moment. And I think they will hold on. And I think this will be a 1-1 draw. I could see Reading having many, many chances, but just not being able to punch her through the defence and Charlton could have two or three chances and they'll score one goal in one of those chances. So I will see this game as a 1-1 draw and Charlton will remain undefeated and Reading will continue their strong start to the championship. Now we have Nottingham Forest versus Preston North End. Nottingham Forest, I think, are slowly but surely finding their feet under Sabri Namuchi. He's gained the best of the likes of Lewis Graben and Joe Lolly. I think both are working really well together. With Preston, they've had a terrific start with three wins out of five there in the playoffs as it stands. However, stat that Preston would not want to hear, they've lost six away games in a row if you look back at last season as well. So it's a stat that you would not want to be carrying going to this game. However, a little bit of reassurance is that they actually got an away victory against Nottingham Forest last year and it was Moult who scored. However, much to Preston's disappointment, Moult is injured so it's not like he could go on to this game and, and for history to repeat itself. Nottingham Forest have actually never beaten Preston North End, which is a stat I honestly cannot believe exists with the amount of times that they've played each other. Most of the games end as a draw and despite Preston's real, real dire away form at the moment and Nottingham Forest's pretty strong star, I don't think a lot is going to separate them. Obviously, both were playing in the Cowbell Cup Nottingham Forest completely dispatched Derby for which was a terrific performance against their East Midlands rival. With Preston North End, they had to go all the way to penalties after going 2-0 up against Hull and ultimately they allowed Hull to get back into it with Jared Bowen scoring the final minute. The thing as a prediction, I'm actually going to predict that it's going to be a 1-1 draw. Keeping in mind that Preston have not had a real good away record and that Nottingham Forest have never beaten Preston as of yet. I think they're going to cancel each other out and it'll be a 1-1 draw going into the international break. So now we have Millwall versus Hull and I am really interested how this game's going to come out. Both have actually experienced Cowbell Cup defeats, both ending in penalties. Hull, as I said, lost to penalties against Preston. Millwall, however, lost on penalties against Oxford and they were 2-0 up with two great goals from John Daddy Bob Varson, but they simply allowed Oxford to get back into into the final five minutes and they completely bottled it in terms of penalties and they got knocked out by lower league opposition. I think with Millwall, they're going to play their set-piece game. They're not going to have a lot of the ball, but they'll use a lot of corners and a lot of free kicks to try and pose a big threat to the defence, which I say has caught Hull out a couple of times. Hull, I think, are going to want to play their slick passing into locking football with Rzyski piling through a lot of pressure on the left like he was doing a lot against Blackburn. I think this is the closest fixture for me to predict at the moment. Both have almost had mirrored images of what's happened to them in midweek. And in terms of the squads, I think each squad is very, very closely matched. Although Millwall are a lot higher in the table than Mill Hull are on the table, but you would argue that Hull's squad is arguably better than Millwall's squad. So I think to predict, I'm going to predict, I'm going to say a 2-1 home victory to Millwall. I think there's just a slight pattern going on for Hull are just not going to have a lot of luck going into this first international break. I think eventually stuff will go down their way but I think on home ground I think Millwall will just about have too much for Hull so I'll say a 2-1 home victory to Millwall. So the next game is Luton Town versus Huddersfield and I'd say this is an opportunity for both of these teams to get some points on the board going into the international break. Luton got their first win of the season, beating Barnsley away from home, which was a terrific performance by them. Huddersfield are still winless and they still don't have a manager in place. I feel like they need to get one ASAP, in my honest opinion. Carl and Grant and Trevor Chalibar are the only two players in Huddersfield squads that's actually scored this season, which is not a great stat for them. Luton have had players scoring from all around the field, which can be really encouraging getting into this game. With Luton at home as well in Kenilworth Road, I think they'll just about have too much for Huddersfield. I think after the international break, they're going to need to take a real good look at themselves and they're going to want to start again and then they can start 
climbing up the table. So I think Luton will dispatch Huddersfield by two goals to nil. I think Luton will be capable of keeping a clean sheet, even though Simon Sluder could make the odd clanger here and there. But I think Luton will comfortably dispatch Huddersfield by two goals to nil, which will set them a nice, comfortable position in the table. Another really close game, I think, will be Brentford versus Derby. Derby will be in a disadvantage of them having to play in midweek. It was a real, real tr bad loss against Nottingham Forest. They didn't have a shot on target in that game, which was more disappointing. Like, if, if they were going to lose to Nottingham Forest, at least give Forest a little bit of fear and fight. And they didn't really do that. Nothing really clicked for Koku. I think he's got to be really, really careful how he sets Derby against Brentford. Brentford, who will be very, very determined to try and get some more points on the board. They've got the squad very capable of being high up there like near the playoffs, but it's just not quite worked for them at the moment. And same goes for Derby. They've got a very, very capable squad. But at the moment, things have just not gone their way. But how I see this game, I think this would be a real, real close game. Like Millwall and Hull, I think both teams are in a similar position in terms of the championship. I think Brentford, though, will get a win. And I think it will be a 2-1 home victory to Brentford. I think Brentford eventually has got to get things going for them. And I think after their Derby's loss in midweek, they're going to feel a little bit fatigued and I'm not sure how Koku's going to make them energetic for this game. So I think Brentford will capitalise on that and they'll get a 2-1 home victory. Birmingham versus Stoke is once again another game for both teams to have great opportunities to snatch points. Birmingham at the moment have been a team I can't really put my finger on. At times they've looked okay, but they've not really given me a performance over 90 minutes there. I think, yes, Birmingham are really, really comfortable. They've never really looked all that comfortable in their games yet. With Stoke, they're still looking for their first victory in the Championship. However, they did get their first victory of the season, managing to beat the leaders' leads on penalty. In the first half, I thought Stoke were absolutely terrific. They coped with Leeds' pressure very, very well and they scored two pretty good goals to get Stoke 2-0 up at the break. With Bielsa though, he introduced a triple substitution and I was a bit disappointed how Stoke didn't deal with it. Jack Butland was made zero to hero in this game because to Eddie Nketiah's goal, I don't know what he was doing. He was trying to pass it to one of the defenders and they weren't paying attention. Just a miscommunication and Nketiah not made to Butland and managed to be the contributor for Leeds to get back into this. Jack Bonham, however, took Stoke's final penalty and scored it. And with Jack Harrison missing his penalty, Stoke managed to go through in the end. So I, I was happy that Jack Butland was now seen as the good rather than the bad in that game. This could be a game that goes in two ways. If Birmingham score first, I feel like Birmingham will be pretty comfortable. However, if Stoke can score first, they can re be riding high with a lot of confidence and they could run right against Birmingham. Birmingham looked really defensively solid against Swansea until Roger Baston had his first shot on goal, which Lee Camp had to make a smart save for. I feel like if they can keep that concentration going for the 90 minutes, Stoke would really, really struggle because I'm still not convinced the likes of Tom Ince is going to score many goals for Stoke. As a prediction, I think this would be pretty close, but I do believe that it's going to end as a draw. I think this will be, I'm going to say a nil-nil draw. I actually believe that Stoke are going to struggle to try and get through this Birmingham defence. I don't think Birmingham would want to sit back for the whole game. They may try and push forward, but I just have a feeling that both teams will cancel each other out and I think it'll be a game that not a lot happens with. So I'm going to say a nil-nil draw between that. And I deliberately left this game for last. It is first versus second, Leeds versus Swansea. I am so excited by this game. Both have had matching forms. They've got a win, a draw, win, win, win. So nothing could really split these teams at the moment. They've also are only separated by one goal as well in terms of goal difference. Leeds have only conceded twice. Swansea have actually conceded four times. So in fact, Swansea have scored more goals than Leeds so far this season. Last time they played each other, Leeds managed a narrow 2-1 victory where overall they were the better team, but they just have to be a little bit careful in terms of Swansea's attack. Swansea has still yet to play Cambridge in their Cowbell Cup tie. Leeds have lost against Stoke and even though they weren't playing great in the first half, their response was tremendous trying to get back into the second half. They could have even won the game in the end with the amount of chances they had, but there seems to be a real strong mentality around Leeds at the moment. 
I think on home ground, you're really going to see that and you're going to have an intimidating atmosphere set by the Leeds fans for sure. I think with Swansea, they're going to go really on a, on a fearless approach. I mean, their first away game wasn't convincing against Derby. They created close to nothing that game. However, when you look against QPR, they were absolutely terrific. I think as a prediction, this will be really, really close. This is so tough. But I think plenty of goals will be scored. And I remember at the Liberty Stadium, Swansea were the first team to disrupt Leeds 100% start to the season with two Oliver McBurney goals. Obviously, he's not around anymore. I think both will cancel each other out. I think this will be a 2-2 draw again. Leeds could win the game. That would be my alternative result. But I have a feeling Swansea are going to go real, really fearlessly. And I think they'll get a valiant point out of it. So I'm going to say a 2-2 so obviously it wouldn't be a fixture marathon without the three remaining fixtures. So the first fixture I was going to talk about was Doncaster versus Berry, And unfortunately, as I record this video, Berry are actually no longer in the Football League. They've been expelled. They've been the first team to be expelled since Maidstone in 1992. It's an emotional day for the EFL and... I can only say for everyone at Gig Lane, everyone at Berry FC, I hope that something will come out good out of it. I hope maybe a different name, a different brand of a team, but I hope a Berry football team based around Gig Lane will eventually get back in the EFL. It could take a lot of time, but I emphasise with all of you right now, and I hope you'll get better from this. So in the game I'm going to talk about instead is going to be on my boys Colchester, and they're going to be away against Oldham Athletic. I'm choosing this game because I'm going to be very interested to see how Colchester recover from their tremendous penalty victory against Crystal Palace. It was a game that Palace, I think, dominated most of it. Benteke really should have scored. He hit the bar and it hit down on the line and it somehow didn't go over the line. Colchester did have chances on their own, actually. Frank Newball, I thought, was really good. With Oldham, they've had a pretty slow start, but they picked up their form a little bit. As a prediction, I think it's going to be really, really close, but I do believe that this will be a 1-1 draw. I think both teams will cancel each other's out. It will be very typical of Colchester to go ahead in this game, but then bottle it and then draw the game. So, Or maybe even lose the game, but I'm going to say a 1-1 draw between Oldham and Colchester. For the second game, we're going all the way to Serie A for this game, and it's Juventus versus Napoli. I am very interested to see how Maurizio Sarri is going to face his former club. Napoli, of course, with Carlo Ancelotti in charge. Napoli looked really, really good last year, playing some fantastic football along the way. Juventus narrowly got past Parma, but I do believe that Juventus in quality are stronger with the likes of De Ligt at the back. They've still got Emre Can, Aaron Ramsey and Pjanic in the midfield, and then they've got a really strong attack as well. Of course, with Ronaldo on the wing, who can play striker if he needed to. As a prediction, I think this will be really close. I think a lot of goals will be scored. I think it will just about be Juventus, and I think it will be a 2-1 home victory. And then the final game on my birthday, funnily enough, it's the old firm, Rangers versus Celtic. I'm so excited to watch this game live, and I don't know who to go for. Rangers have really competed with Celtic ever since Steven Gerrard's come in. There seems to be a new mentality around Rangers at the moment. I don't want to say Celtic would be at their best without Brendan Rodgers. Neil Lennon is doing a job, and but let's be real, the quality of the Celtic squad is miles ahead of everyone else. But with the way that Steven Gerrard has come in, he's added a new mentality to Rangers, meaning that they can compete with anyone. And Rangers could really give Celtic a real run for their money. Both teams are on 100% runs at the moment. Obviously, one run will come to an end after this game. And I actually going to predict a shock. I'm going to say Rangers are going to win by two goals to nil. I think Rangers are going to have a really positive performance. And I think the team in blue are going to be celebrating the old firm. So I'm going to say a 2 nil home victory to Rangers. But there you have it. These are my score predictions with my championship predictions there. And my special free fixtures over there. Do you agree with me or disagree with me? Let me know in the comments down below. Let me know what you think about your weekend's fixture. Are you confident about it? Let me know in the comments down below. But anyway guys, that will wrap it up for today's video. If you liked what you see, please do give the video a like, a share and a subscribe. All of that would be massively appreciated. But thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are legendary if you saw the end of the video. Take care.